Hey there, this is Travis with Buzzsprout, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to record, edit, and export your podcast episodes using GarageBand. So when you first open up GarageBand, this is the screen that you're going to see. It's going to ask you if you want to start an empty project or use one of GarageBand's templates. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to start with an empty project and we're going to create what's going to end up being your podcast episode template. So with empty project selected, we're going to hit choose and it's going to open up GarageBand for us. So from here, GarageBand wants to know what kind of track to create for your first track, whether it's an instrument, an audio that recording directly into GarageBand, or a drummer. I, lo I love the image of the drummer there. But because we're doing a podcast, we're going to choose microphone and then we're going to select our input, and we want input 1. Now, as you can see, GarageBand has already identified my Scarlett 2i2 USB interface, which is what I'm recording through from my microphone to my computer, and that's exactly what we want. We want input 1 on the Scarlett 2i2 to be recording on our track. And then I just hit Create, and GarageBand is going to create the first track for us. So this is the default screen that you're going to see when you create a brand new empty project in GarageBand. But what we want to do is modify the settings to be for podcasts. And there's a couple things you need to do. For instance, up here at the top, we don't really care about tempo. We don't care what key we're in, those kind of things. And so what you want to do is you want to toggle off metronome. We don't want a metronome going on in the background while we're recording. Uh, we can toggle off the count in. We don't need that. And then over here, this drop down, you want to go from beats and project to time. And this is going to change your timeline to just be seconds and minutes. Over here you have your audio track, which is what we set up when we were creating this empty project. Down here under track, you can see that the input is track one on my Scarlett 2i2 USB interface, which is exactly what we want. And we don't really need this library over here, so I'm just going to minimize that by clicking the library icon. And that's it. Now you have a GarageBand project that you can open up to record podcast episodes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to file, save as, and then over on my desktop, I'm going to save this as GarageBand podcast template. So next time I'm going to start a new podcast episode, all I have to do is open up that project template and all of these settings will be saved. So when you're getting ready to record in GarageBand, if it's just you and your microphone, it's actually pretty simple because we've already created this template, we already have our track and our input selected. So all you have to do at this point is hit record or R on your keyboard. And as I am speaking into the microphone, you can see that it's picking up my voice, creating these nice little waveforms uh, to show me that it is indeed picking up my audio. At the top, you have this clock that tells you how long you've been recording and uh, then you can very easily see that, yeah, it's working. So to stop this, all you have to do is hit stop or spacebar on your keyboard. And now we have this audio that I can go back, I can listen to it, I can edit it, I can tweak it. But that is how you record one person's audio into GarageBand. But let's say that I want to interview somebody in person and I want them to have their own microphone. So in GarageBand, there's a couple settings you need to enable in order to make that possible, in order to have multi-track recording. That's, the, that's the, the fancy word, the official word for it. So what you want to do first is let's say that this is going to be my track, so Travis's audio, and I'm going to interview my buddy Rick. So what I want to do is click this plus sign up here for a new track, and it's the same thing. I'm going to choose audio, and then for input, I'm going to choose input 2, because he's going to be using a different microphone input on my Scarlett 2i2 USB. Then I just hit create, and it creates an additional track. Still don't need the library, so I can minimize that. I'm going to rename it as Rick's Audio, just so it's easier for me to identify and see. Now I have two tracks set up. Now in order for GarageBand to record both myself and the person I'm interviewing at the same time, there's another feature I need to enable. If I go up to Track on the top toolbar and click on Configure Track Header, there's an extra box right here it's called Record Enable that you have to have checked. When you do that, you'll see this record button pop up next to each audio track. You need to select both of those buttons, 
And when they're flashing, that means that both of those tracks are going to record simultaneously whenever I hit this uh, main record button up here. So now I'm recording, and you can see that GarageBand is picking up my voice on audio track number one. And then if I were to switch over to the second microphone, you'll see it start to pick up my voice on the second track. Now you will notice a little bit of a echo up here, uh, and that's just some microphone bleed because I'm still, you know, in close proximity to the first microphone. But I am currently speaking into microphone number two. Now I'm speaking back into microphone number one. So that's how you can capture both your audio and another person's at the same time and have each person use their own microphone, have their own audio track, and, and be able to then edit each person individually, which is really, really important when you get to the editing phase of your podcast episode. And this is something you can do for three people, four people, as many people as your audio interface or mixer will allow. So now I'm going to teach you some really important editing techniques that you will use often as you're editing your podcast episode in GarageBand. The first one I want to show you is the trim tool. So you'll notice I have an intro narration section up here that I've already edited a little bit. Uh, I have the interview itself for my podcast episode, and then I also have my theme song. But I don't need this much of it. I only need till about 30 seconds. And so what you want to do is dr go over to the right side of the clip, click on it, and then drag it to wherever you want it to be. So here we're going to drag it all the way over to about 30 seconds or so, release the mouse, and now that clip is 30 seconds. Pretty cool, right? Now the next technique that you're going to use is called the split at playhead tool. So let's say that we want to cut out 40 seconds to 45 seconds from my intro narration, that particular section. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to 40 seconds, click on the track, and then right click and go down to split at playhead. And what that's going to do is it's going to create a little cut in my audio. So if I was going to move my audio to the right, you'll see a gap there now, whereas before it was one audio clip. And then we're going to go over to 45 seconds, and we're going to do that as well. You can also just use Command T, which is the keyboard shortcut for split up playhead. It's going to create another cut. And now, if we wanted to remove this, we could highlight it, delete it, and then select all the clips to the right of it and manually shift those over so that way there's no break anymore. And that's how you cut out sections of your episode audio or your audio file. But there's an easier way to do that because uh, you don't want to find yourself manually moving all of your audio files back and forth as you're editing clips. And it's a function called delete and move. So if I go up to the top and go to edit, scroll down here, you see a delete and move function. So what that's going to do is take a highlighted clip, delete it, and then move everything to the right over and replace it. So if we will go back to 40 seconds, create our slice, split a playhead with Command T, go to 45 seconds and do the same thing. Let's highlight this clip, and now we're going to go to edit, delete, and move. And you'll see that that clip gets deleted, everything to the right shifts over, and now you don't have to worry about you know shifting it or moving it into the wrong spots. And I use this tool so much that I've actually created a custom shortcut for it. So if I'm going to Command Z, if I'm going to undo that, you can still see this. I have uh, programmed this as Delete and Move as Option Command M. So if I'm in here and I hit Option Command M, it automatically does Delete and Move. And this is a setting that you can do in your system settings on your MacBook or your iMac or whatever kind of Apple computer you're using. You can go in and manually create these keyboard shortcuts because uh, by default, GarageBand does not have this as a shortcut. Now the third tool that you'll want to use when you're editing your audio is the automation tool. Now what is that? Automation in GarageBand is what allows you to manually adjust the volume of an audio track within itself. So it's not just the overall volume of each particular segment, but it's how you can control it within the track. Let me explain. So if you hit A on your keyboard, you're going to see your screen change like this. It's, it's almost like a silhouette of the original tracks. 
Now, if you click on any of these tracks, so let's click on the first one, you'll see this yellow bar up here. Now this means that you can adjust the volume for the entire track, or if I click on various points along this yellow bar, you'll see these dots up here. And those allow you to adjust the volume for those sections. So see now, at this point, the volume is lower, and then as the episode plays, it's gonna get gradually louder until it gets to here, and then it's gonna be at normal volume. So the reason that this is really helpful is so if we want to bring up the volume of the narration portion while we fade out the volume from the theme music to make a really nice transition that's not too jarring and doesn't feel like you cut and paste it, you can very easily do that. So now if you played it through, the volume of the theme music would go down, the volume of the intro would come in, and you can adjust these points wherever you want them, and you can adjust the magnitude of the, the crescendos and decrescendos to your liking. So to show you how I like to organize my episodes, uh, I've opened up a completed podcast episode for an episode of podcasting in real life. And so here you can see the general flow is top left to bottom right. So I have different tracks for each segment of the podcast episode. So I have the intro clip, which is taken from the interview itself, uh, the theme song, the intro narration portion where I'm just speaking into the microphone, the interview itself, a nice little sound effect that I like to use to signal the end of my interview, the outro theme song and outro narration. So each segment of my podcast, each audio track is separate and unique. And this allows me to manually change the volume settings for each of these and then also go in and do some automation stuff. So here you can see that with the theme song, I gradually bring it up as the intro clip is playing. And then once the intro clip is over, I put it at full volume for a period of time and then I bring it back down to transition into the episode. And you want each audio file to be on its own track. You might feel like it's easier to put everything on one track, but I promise you it is so much easier to edit your episodes this way. It's gonna save you a lot of grief down the road. Now, once you're satisfied with your podcast episode, you've done everything you want to do to it, editing-wise, it's time to export it because you can't upload a GarageBand project file to your podcast host to then distribute to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts. You need to upload either a WAV or an MP3 file. So the way that you do that in GarageBand is at the top toolbar, instead of going File, Save, you're going to go over to Share, export song to disk. And that's gonna actually create that WAV or MP3 file. And so here you can see that it's already created a name for my episode. I'm just going to take off the date and time, save it to my desktop, that's fine. And then here you can choose between AAC, MP3, AIFF, and WAV. So you'll either want MP3 or WAV. You can also see a drop down here where you can change the bit rate or quality of the uh, of the export. I like using Wave 16 bits. And then you just hit export. And you'll see the playhead scrub through the entire episode, exporting it to a Wave file. When it gets to the end, it's going to do a normalization of the audio. And then you'll have your finished product. And that's it. Now you have a WAV or an MP3 file that you can upload to your podcast host to then distribute to all of your listeners on all the apps that they like to listen to your podcast on. Now, once you have exported your podcast episode from GarageBand, I recommend running it through a software called Alphonic. Now, Alphonic will polish your podcast episodes to give you that high quality sound that you're looking for. And you can just click the card right here to watch our complete tutorial on how to use Alphonic for your podcast. And if you're a new podcaster, make sure you are subscribed to this YouTube channel. Every single week we put out new gear review videos, podcast strategy videos, and software tutorials like the one that you just watched. And so this is gonna be a fantastic resource for you as you learn more about how to be a podcaster. And if you have a question about something I did or didn't cover 
in this software tutorial related to GarageBand, just leave a comment below this video and I'll do my best to answer it for you. Well, that's the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, keep podcasting.